find my weaknesses and improve on them. We talk about 23 wins. That's an absolutely spectacular mixed martial arts record. Carol's got his off time to look for the takedown. There he goes. Hello everyone, welcome to the TriStar Gym channel. In this episode, we're looking at countering a single leg takedown or high crotch takedown with Kimura. What you're seeing in front of you is Mark Schultz in the 1984 Olympics. He used this technique um, against a Turkish wrestler. He ended up breaking the Turkish wrestler's arm and was later disqualified. They said he put the arm too far back behind his opponent and um, <clears throat> it was considered illegal. So here's me doing it. I'm drilling it here at the end of practice. And um, I think it's a very powerful technique, whether you're using it gi, no gi, MMA, um, if your opponent is sweaty or not. This is a beautiful grip. It's a beautiful way to throw somebody. And I highly recommend this move. So we're going to look at the details now of how to do this uh, technique. And then we're going to look at common counters and how to avoid those common counters and deal with them. Okay, so the first part... You just grab the kimura hold around his arm. I'm assuming you guys already know this. This is obviously the first part of the technique. You got to grab the kimura grip. Once you have the kimura grip, the next very important step here is grab his calf with your foot. Okay, it's very, very important. I want to get a good grip on his leg. So the first part of my grip on his leg is to grab the calf. And the other part of the, that grip is to drive my knee in his hip bone. Okay, so now you get a good, good angle of uh, what I'm doing with my knee here. I'm driving it right in his hip bone. Okay, so what I'm doing here is my foot is pulling his leg in this direction and my knee is pulling his pushing his leg in this direction okay so I have that nice grip on that leg I need to grip this leg before I throw him okay this leg has to be under control so I'm driving my knee forward pulling with my foot real simple stuff this is what I don't want oftentimes people do this is a bad idea the guy on top of you could just sprawl on top of your thigh here and crush your knees together okay I want to make sure that my knee is driving into his hip and is not suspended in midair okay that's very important stuff so once i have my grip the next step is to just dive uh, between the legs okay so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this foot here and i'm going to slide it between his legs and i'm going to try to get as far as possible to the other side of his body now a lot of people take this foot here and they just step on the outside here and place it here i think that's okay too i do both ways okay but in this video i'm sliding it between the legs i'm not against stepping on the outside i find myself doing that sometimes but i do find that uh, between the two, I prefer to slide in between the legs. I think I have more leverage that way. So you see how I slide my leg right in between his legs. And the deeper you get between his legs, the more leverage you're going to have. The more you get under his center of gravity, n the more easily you're going to topple him over. Okay, so then I just step over his head and finish the kimura. So here we go again. I grab the kimura. I grab his calf with my foot. I'm driving my knee in his hip. I slide my, my, legs between his, uh, my leg between his legs. Spin him all the way over to side control and uh, pass my leg over his head to finish the Kimura. Here's a different angle. Now, I'm not going over the details of Kimura, but uh, for now, just step over his head and wrench that arm behind his, uh, his back. Okay. So here we go. Sometimes you throw your opponent, and when you throw your opponent, you didn't have enough momentum to get right away on top to side control. No problem. Your opponent's probably going to still be locking his hands together because he knows you have the Kimura. Triangle his arm and pop your legs and, and break his arm, his grip apart. Okay, so I pop my legs uh, downwards, I pull my, the Kimura upwards in the opposite direction, I break his grip. Now, when I break his grip, look at the position I'm getting. I'm, I'm going onto my side here, I'm stretching the Kimura. Notice how I straighten my arms here. Okay, so you straighten your arms, keeping the Kimura grip. And now I want to get to side control, okay, but you can see that his head here is jamming my body. So I gotta lift my hips up as high as possible. Watch what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna post on my head. So I post my head on the ground. I'm gonna elevate my hips by walking on my feet. So I'm in a tripod position, mat on, head on the mat, feet on the mat. That brings my hips up in the air. I'm gonna walk all the way over to side control and get back to the same position I was in earlier. So I go to throw my opponent. This time the momentum is not enough to carry me all the way over to side control. Watch how I triangle his wrist with my legs. I'm gonna pop his grip open. Straighten my kimura, post my head on the mat, 
walk right over to side control. Now in this position, there are so many things that can happen. I mean, he might try to roll away, you have to take his back, you can knock him back down with the Kimura. You can do so many things, okay? Let me rewind that back here, just in this position here. When you land, when you throw a guy, there are so many things that can happen here. So I'm gonna be putting out another video, but it's gonna be an unlisted video. To get my unlisted videos, just uh, go in the description, there's a link, click the link, opt in for the email list, and my email listers are gonna be getting special content, unlisted YouTube videos, and uh, our, our uh, sponsor, Quest Nutrition, is going to be giving away um, uh, free, uh, free stuff, okay? Quest bars and, and uh, protein canisters, etc. to all the email list members. So you guys are going to be getting extra content and uh, Quest Nutrition products, okay? So here's another common counter. My partner is going to try to throw me with the Kimura. Watch what I'm going to do here, okay? Watch. I'm going to drop to my knees. As I feel he's trying to throw me, this is a common counter. They sprawl like you would sprawl against the double leg. Same thing. So now when they sprawl, you weren't able to get underneath, you're not able to lift them, and watch what happens here. They can walk over your head and go right into armbar. Okay, so how, how do I avoid this? It's quite simple, okay? So watch here. I'm going to grab the Kimura. This is a little bit more advanced stuff, guys. So if you have a, some good level of Kimura experience, this is a, a good move for you. So watch here. I grab the Kimura. I'm about to throw my opponent, but as I go to the throw, he sprawls. He drops his way down to the floor, you know? So I, I'm not able to get that roll. And now watch what I'm going to do here. I'm going to post my head on the mat, I'm going to lift my hips up, I'm going to go back to my tripod position, and I'm going to drive him all the way to his back. Okay, this is a beautiful move, I hit this all the time, especially when guys think that uh, they're going to walk over and get to side control, I just knocked them right over and turned the tables on them, okay, it's a beautiful move. So watch, here comes the toss, and now look, my opponent sprawled, he's trying to walk his way to side control, I'm posting my head on the mat, I'm knocking him over. I'm going to be showing a lot of different angles on this, so don't worry if you didn't get it just yet. I'm going to explain this thoroughly. Okay, so here it is again. I go for the throw. He sprawls to side control. Now watch my head here. Watch what I'm going to do with my head. Watch here. Look at my head. My head is going to go and post on the mat. There it is. Post on the mat. And now I'm going to lift my hips up in the air and knock him over with my hips. Watch this. I go to my toes here. I go drive my toes in the mat. Knock him over. I'm still holding the Kimura. Look at this position here. When you go to the gym practicing it, notice this position. Here's a different angle. So watch here, watch what I'm going to do, I post my head on the mat, look at the elevation I get with my hips, it's all about getting your hips up in the air, okay, he's not able to climb to my back because I'm holding the Kimura, I'm driving my toes in the ground, I'm driving my hip across his chest, that's going to knock him over, that Kimura grip on his arm is what's stopping him from being able to successfully climb to my back. Okay, so watch here, one thing you, you weren't able to see because of the angle was what I'm doing with his arm, okay, so I took his right arm and I'm bringing it to the left side of my body, okay? So I see his right arm is on the right side of my body. Watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to bring it to the left side of my body. So I'm bringing it away from his hips as far as possible. See that? And that's going to make for an easy roll. I don't want to try to roll. You see how I'm rolling? Out? This is the, what most people do. They try to roll. They jam that arm against their own body. So I, what I want to do, most people try to roll with the arm on this side of the body. I want to bring the arm all the way to this side of my body. Okay, so watch here. Watch this here. When I roll, I'm dragging it across my body. I'm going to give you guys a better look at this in a second here. Knees in the chest so he doesn't take my back and get right to side control. Okay, so watch here again. I grab the Kimura. Look how I drive it across my body. And once you drive it across your body, he's already going to start falling. And then when you tripod up and knock him over with your hips, he's going to go down like a ton of bricks. Okay, so watch here. What I'm doing is I'm pulling the arm in this direction, and my hips are knocking him over in this direction. So you see how I'm getting that circular motion here? My hips are knocking him over here, and I'm pulling his arm in this direction. Okay, does that make sense? So that's what's creating the rotation. Now, it's not only important to create this rotation, but I also want the height of my hips. See, my hips are really high off the ground. This is super important. The higher you get up your hips, the higher you get your hips, the better. So to get your hips up really high, you got to post your head on the mat, post your feet on the mat, and get those hips up. Really important. Get those hips up. Drive that arm across your body. You're going to knock the guy over with ease. Okay. So here it is again. Posting on my head. Knock him over. And when you jump over to the other side of his body, make sure you tuck your knees in your chest. Okay. Here's me showing it again. See how I rotated that arm? That was a beautiful little angle of, of to, to you know, give you guys a nice visual. Watch how I tuck that arm in. See? Look at that. See how I tuck that arm in? Right. That's what creates the rotation. Knock him over, knees in the chest, jump back to side control on the opposite side. Here's another look. 
drive that arm across. This is a beautiful move to use against a wrestler or, or anybody attacking you, trying to take you down. When they try to take you down, not only are you defending the takedown, but you're turning the tables on them so badly that you're getting to a finishing position. All right, here's a last look at uh, Mark Schultz in the 1984 Olympics. He did it beautifully here. Unfortunately, he got disqualified because he wrenched the arm too far behind in the back. And he ended up breaking the Turkish wrestler's arm. Here it is, too far behind. That's illegal in wrestling, perfectly legal in jiu-jitsu, of course, in MMA. Hope you guys enjoyed that episode. If you did, please push the like button, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.